next question here from Soladin. Um, <laughs> I like this question. Who asked, uh, do you think you missed the mark by setting up, by setting mixed up expectations with 7.2 and 7.5? Hey, it's Sol. It's April 28th, 2017. This is Warcraft Weekly. So let's start off with the usual stuff. How was your week? My week was actually pretty calm. There wasn't a whole lot going on in the world of, of, of Soul. I did the usual spats of content that I normally do, but there were some other things that I did as well. I gave some feedback, or otherwise I made some more negative slanting videos, but it was more like feedback. First thing I talked about was flight. I also did a revisit of five things that I just did not like about Legion from the very start. A lot of things have changed since then, and well, for the most part, a lot of those things don't really suck anymore. Except for Nomi. Nomi sucks. A lot. But I also brought up five new things that I'm just not really feeling with Legion as of as of this patch, as of 7.2. So maybe when 7.3 comes by, maybe I'll do another video to just kind of see where we're at. I also did an extensive guide, a full walkthrough on how to acquire one of the most important things in World of Warcraft, a puppy. I am doing more morning streams. It's actually a lot of fun. There's a there's a decent amount of people that join in for a listen in the morning. I'm, I'm more than happy to do that. Well, sometimes it's the morning. For some folks over in the EU, it's the evening, and that's totally okay. Like I said, I've been having a lot of fun doing them, but I still haven't quite got a, a set schedule down as for like exactly what time I'm going to do it, or even like how many, day, how many days I'm doing it. I think I did three this week, which was really cool. So if you're interested in joining for the show and a little bit of banter, uh, feel free to not just subscribe to the channel but to turn on your notifications to uh, know whenever I'm streaming or you can follow me over on Twitch and to, you know subscribe there or whatever it is you'll get notifications there too. Feel free to check out that stuff or anything in the link below and uh, otherwise let's get to the news. Volunteer Guard Day is going on today and tomorrow and it is exactly what you think. You go to a city, you talk to a guard, you turn into a guard, for some reason I happen to turn into a female, but whatever. And you patrol your city, protecting it from critters and random invaders. Or maybe he'll just go right in front of Sarafang's house and just AoE the crap out of invaders until you get what you want and then you go away and, well, that's pretty much the holiday. This week's construction of the command building gave us these new elite strike missions. They, they're, they're, they're really long, they're really hard to counter. Well, they're kind of hard to counter, but they're really lucrative. They can give you legion fall supplies, or a lot of artifact power, or a bunch of nether shards if you're really inclined. As a tip for you all, if you happen to have a champion that gives you reduced mission time, try to power that uh, that particular champion up as, as much as you can. By using that champion and countering all the other stuff that's thrown at you, I was able to actually double up on one of the missions that I was able to get. So now I have another 500 Legion Fall resources coming my way, and I'm all the better for it. Meanwhile, on North American Realms, the Mage Tower, or the Rage Tower, is about to go back up. A little FYI for you fellow Protection Paladins out there, the, the, the main mobs that come from our challenge, the Inquisitor Guy and High Lord Cruel, they had their HP values reduced by just a little bit more to kind of bring them, to kind of bring them more in line with, um, with how the tank challenges are for the other tanks. In other words, that fucker's gonna die a painful death, and I can't wait to show you. Or I'm gonna show you how much I fail at continued nerfs, because I, get, I keep getting knocked back by stupid infernals. Stupid infernals. A recent change has disabled a certain add-on called World Quest Group Finder, something that a lot of players apparently were using and I barely knew about. For you others who happen to not know, World Quest Group Finder is, a, is an add-on that allows you to automatically sign up for groups uh, whenever you're out in the world, whenever you're out in the world doing world quests. You automatically get into a group, you, you know, do the objectives together. Ideally, you do the objectives together and, you know, that's pretty much it. Apparently there was a problem that this and other add-ons were causing that were causing like latency problems, lag, uh, phasing problems, or sharding problems. <laughs> sharding. <laughs> but it's basically gone and there's been a lot of mixed reactions from different players. Players like me just don't care. I mean, I'm a tank and I never had to group up with folks and, well, you know, that's, you know, that's beside the point. People that were very much for this add-on were pretty much dependent on it. You know, they felt that uh, being around the world is, is such a chore and being able to use this add-on was essential in order to get things done. Otherwise, they feel that world quests are just unbearable. On the other side of things, and this happens to be people that do use the world quest group finder add-on, uh, they would find that the add-on was being abused by players who were just kind of flying up in the air and they would you know get queued up into into a group and they would just stay there while someone else was doing the work for them so you just had people really zipping around 
getting stuff done for you know kind of free uh, to you know to their benefits uh, at the cost of others work at any rate though this is more like a blizzard technical issue that was causing issues for all for all players regardless of whether or not they use the add-on the way that the add-on works now because it's not totally broken is that now blizzard is saying that you need to have a sort of prompt available in order to get queued up into these groups so it's no longer automatic which i know is uh, one of the big selling points of this thing so i'm curious because i think i might have tried using the add-on and then i gave up because i really didn't want to deal with people uh what did you, you know what do you think of this do you think that this add-on should be um you know do you think this kind of technology should be more supported by blizzard do you think that blizzard should just solve that problem um on on their end and allow this sort of automatic system to work or do you think blizzard should create their own system of create of doing automatic queues of this nature. I know that this sort of technology of auto grouping sort of exists. I think like Rift comes to mind and maybe Final Fantasy 14. I don't remember very well, but uh, that technology does exist, but I think that didn't have anything to do with like cross realm technology either. So it looks like there's some sort of clash there. But anyway, I'm certainly not gonna miss it. It wasn't of any use to me, of course, but what do you folks think? Yesterday, Josh Allen and Ian Hezekostas had another Q and A where I expected that they would be grilled over seven two stuff and they pretty much were so really quick and with a little bit of help i'm gonna go over some of the highlights one is that the tumor of sargeras raid is going to come mid to late june which basically means that the 725 patch is going to come uh, maybe one or two weeks right before that so for folks who have been dissatisfied with 7.2 so far, that's around the time you guys can come back. Ian did in fact admit to his shortcomings when it came to the 7.2 planning. Now it turns out the way 7.2 was supposed to be planned, it was supposed to be kind of a staggered, um, kind of a staggered distribution of quests and filler content. Unfortunately, it turned out that they did front load a lot of this more meaty quest content. Uh, and now for the next couple of weeks or maybe a month or so, uh, we're gonna be experiencing a lot of this filler content. So I know Blizzard was really proud and I know that it prompted that boast from Ian that, hey, this is the biggest patch ever. But you know, when it comes to the perspective of the individual player who may only have one class, that's that perspective is extremely limited. So for folks like me who only play like one class and maybe like one other on the side, not even so much an alt, it's just a shitty alt that I barely care about that just farms for stuff. I just don't get to see a lot of content as opposed to a couple, a couple of other guildies of mine who have many many characters and they have plenty of stuff to do they feel a little bit overwhelmed and they have to pick and choose their battles that said it would have been nice if the team was a bit more conscious about everything that they're trying to juggle and remember oh yeah that's right we should try to do much more universal content that all players will be able to participate in or and you folks at home can give your input on this maybe they should have just delayed uh, the 72 patch by a couple of weeks or maybe even a month and that would have been able to kind of compress uh, this this content delivery service that that this content delivery paradigm that they're trying to push and maybe players would be a little bit less dissatisfied um of course having to wait an extra month or so for the patch that would have kind of sucked but it would have given that much more time for uh you know kind of the illusion of hey we have plenty of stuff to do and during 7-2 right before the raid comes out and speaking of illusions or or perceptions uh lauren allen did actually address one of my questions i admit that it was one of the weaker questions but hey can't complain. So it turns out that they are fine with the marketing and the naming and the intent of uh, 7.2 and 7.2.5 where I basically had said that, hey, you know what, maybe 7.2.5 should have been called Tomb Sargeras and 7.2 should have been called like something else because most of what we're experiencing in 7.2 is just the introduction to the Tomb of Sargeras, but not the thing itself. So again, they say it's fine and I disagree, but now we're just juggling semantics and that's not going to get us anywhere. The last thing that I have to say about this matter is that, I don't know, maybe Ian had kind of set himself up for failure by by labeling, you know, like the 7, 1, 7, 2, 7, 3 patches. Like those are going to be the big patches and the 0.5 patches, those are going to be the little patches. Well, that hasn't quite aligned. As you recall, 715 uh, was followed by the Nighthold raid opening like just right after. And at least by my predictions, and I hope that I'm right, I hope that I'm right, uh, a little bit after 725 comes out, that's when the Tumasar Gary rate is going to open. So by labeling these patches in a certain way, it kind of sets expectations in players' minds that when they finally see it, they're like, uh, 
So where's the tomb? Where's the other stuff? They also talked about time walking raids, and even though the Black Temple time walking thingamajigger is not going to come out until 725, it looks like Blizzard is pretty gung ho about getting time walking raids from every expansion. They asked the folks at home watching, hey, what kind of raid would you like to see represent uh, the expansion of that particular time walking era? So like uh, things like not Burning Crusade, but Wrath of the Lich King or Cataclysm or Miss Pandaria or um, okay, maybe not Warlords, not until the next expansion, but basically what do you want to see? I'd like to extend that thought out to you folks at home. What kind of raid do you think should represent the expansion of its time? Feel free to share your thoughts below and I might do a, a fun little a fun little short series where I'll do like a I don't know maybe I'll do like a tournament and and see you know choose your champion of you know choose your champion raid of, of XYZ expansion. One of the questions asked, and it wasn't mine, was about the implementation of Flight in Legion and in 7.2, which, you know, I have a lot of critiques about. Uh, but Blizzard had said, or Ian had said that, you know, they're, they're happy with the implementation, that, you know, it's a cool perk. Or at least, or at least MMO Champion paraphrased to say that, you know, that the team is happy with the perks of Flight. But personally, I prefer that Flight provide uh, additional gameplay on top of the conveniences or, or the perks of flight. Here to talk more about this are two guest correspondents, Talison and Evatel from Talisel and Evatel Do Games. Uh, thanks for coming, you two. And what are no, your... It was a shit um, show, obviously. Uh, ooh, how's the food, guys? Are you are you coming in okay? Fuck off. Oh. Uh, sorry. It must be like... Sucks to it must be, be lag. We can... Oh, okay. Uh, so can you tell us a bit oh, more about um, flight suggestions? Um, Okay, okay, Evatel. Okay, thanks for coming. Um, you you look different. Uh, you know, okay, I don't know if you can Fuck hear me, but... Fuck those cliffs. You want flying. Okay, cool. Yeah. No! Um, just a little bit. Fuck. Okay. Well. I do apologize, folks. That's... Well, it's really unfortunate, but hey. Uh, Talison and Evatel, everybody. Uh, TNA. TNE. Oh my... So, 725 stuff. Uh... <laughs> Fuck up, dude. So 725 stuff. Um, there was a new build that was uh, that came out recently, but there wasn't, you know, there's not too much. There's still going to be a lot of class reiterations and lots of lots of changes and lots of things that'll piss you off. I'd love to hear your folks' thoughts on, you know, on your favorite class or spec. Have they been touched yet? Has anyone mentioned uh, anything yet? Nothing's been mentioned about Protection Paladins. Again, let's see, you know, we'll see what happens next week. But one thing that I did see was stuff on new brawls uh, that are going on for PvP. I know that not everyone's interested in this stuff, but they're introducing a lot of, well, let me just read everything off to you. Boss Fight Arena. Your six-man arena team gets a sixth edition in the form of a boss. Defeat the enemies first to win. I don't know what the fuck that means, but I think I want Prince Malkazar on my side. Who would you want? Deep Wind Dunk. Race to claim balls from the map center and score points in your enemy's basket. Eye of the Horn. No mount? No problem. Grab a goat and head into mounted combat. See, if that is anything like uh, that one world quest over in Stormheim where you hop on a, a random mount and you, you know, do weird shit, that sounds brutal. Hot Mogu. Hot Mogu? Hot Mogu heats up with movement speed and the ability to pass the orb like a hot potato. Okay, I think that actually should be a normal thing for, for that particular battleground. Packed house. Up to 30 players clash in this packed arena match. I'm gonna do that one for sure, <laughs> for sure. Warsong Scramble, Warsong Gulch goes crazy with three flags in play at once, complete with scattered unique power-ups, like a hammer. Please give me a hammer. So that's the news, folks, and once again, I apologize to Talison and Evatel for uh, the kind of weird problems that probably they were having, to be, to be honest, guys, you know? Subscribe to this channel and or follow me on Twitch for all sorts of content and news and banter and analyses and whatever it is that I'm doing. Hit me up on Twitter or Facebook for your questions, your comments, your suggestions, anything like that. Check out the raid streams every Tuesday and Thursday or the morning shows whenever I'm doing them. And I'm heading out, everybody. Thank you again, and you have a good weekend. I'm Sol, and to all of you, and to one in particular, rest well, thank you, and stay breezy.